What's good? This is Kareem from DJBooth.net, and I'm here in the lab to give you guys a quick rundown video review of the new Les Paul 8s or LP8 Active Studio Reference Monitors. So what we have here is a brand new design from a really cool type of product. Everybody knows active reference monitors means that you have a couple of powered monitors here. And these are the 8 inch woofer configuration, hence the name LP8. They also offer these in the LP6, which is a 6 inch woofer configuration and 1 inch tweeter. And also a 4 inch woofer and 1 inch tweeter, which are the LP4s. These come in three different color finishes. As you can see here, they're finished in the same iconic guitars of Les Paul so this is one of the cool finishes for the guitars it's called the cherry burst they also offer these in cherry and they also offer these in tobacco burst so all three colors are really really cool these are the cherry burst and they have a nice shiny front finish they have a really nice durable MDF cabinet it's really really thick enclosure very very sturdy and solid and then you have a metal back plate here right for the connections and your amp and everything else is nice bolted down to the back plane of the metal backing of the LPs. So you have really, really nice quality here. You have really durable construction. You have the metal gate over the front of the woofers and you have a Les Paul insignia in there as well and a nice little Gibson rear of the guitar down here and you have your bass ports on the front so that way you can move all of your bass ported to the front of the cabinet so that way the back of the cabinet is nice and clean so you can keep the back of the cabinet close to a wall without interfering in your bass air movement. So these are a really really nice set of monitors. They have a nice nice sound, really crisp and flat and Gibson brand actually owns KRK so when I first saw that these were on the market I assumed that they probably took some KRK components and just kind of dressed them up to look like a Gibson Les Paul guitar but that was totally wrong. These don't sound really anything like the KRK brand. They're a little bit more refined I'd say. They definitely cost more. These are a thousand dollars each so you can get an Rokit 8 KRK for only about 250 bucks and those will probably even be a little bit louder than these will be. These aren't as loud as those row kits but they do have a nice clear and punchy sound. The bass is really really nice and it's actually more flat so that you can get an accurate reproduction of the sound that you're working with in the studio. They're also good for anybody who just wants to play back some really nice sound and get a really accurate and good reproduction of the original source material. So on the back of these you can see all your connections and all your dials you have your volume control knob all the way to the left then you have your bass and treble so that way you can tweak your EQ of the speaker so that way it sounds right and really good for the type of room that you have. You also have the inputs here which are unbalanced RCA and then you have a combo jack which is balanced XLR and the quarter inch as well. I would have liked to see a separate quarter inch and XLR balanced here so that way I could hook up more than one device using that one single port but you're probably not going to need that in a studio setting and it's not really something that you have to seriously seriously gripe about. It's just that sometimes it's cool to have an extra input here so that way you can co plug in three devices at the same time. You have a power on off switch at the bottom and then you have your power cable so you plug them directly in. So these are really powerful, they really do bump, they sound great, they really really look great and they also come with these felt bags here so that way you can protect your investment and they are really really soft on the inside so that way it keeps the finish nice and bright and nice and protected when you have them either not in use, you can use them as dust covers or you can use them for when you're traveling or when you have to put them in storage. So in conclusion, the LP8s, they have a really durable and heavy style construction. They're not going to really break on you, they're not going to crack on you. They're going to have a really nice clean sound because of this sturdy MDF construction and they're really really durable and they feel like they are built to last. They also have clear and crisp sound with really accurate reproduction of your bass, your mids, and your highs. I really can't speak on it any greater than that. It just has a nice detailed sound, a nice flat sound, so that way you can reproduce your source material nice and accurately. The finish on the front of these are really, really nice and really unique. I really like these finishes. It really can stand out and make your studio pop. Some people are going to like them, some people are going to love them, but personally I think they're really, really cool and they look really, really nice. And on the back, you also have your healthy number of inputs here. So you have your balanced and your unbalanced different combo inputs. And you also have an auto standby feature so that way when you're turning them off 
or when you're leaving them on in the studio, you can hit that standby feature on and you'll draw a lot less power on these just in case you forget to turn them off. On the downside, at a thousand bucks a piece, these are rather expensive and that unique styling that I like so much, a lot of people might not exactly care for it as much as me, so that can also be a negative as well. But for the most part, the Gibson LP8s are a really nice set of monitors with a nice, nice listening experience. They look really, really great. They're built really tough. And they're a really, really nice addition to anybody's studio who wants a nice, accurate reproduction of their sound source material. So for more on the full written review, you can head on over to www.djbooth.net slash DJS, or you can click on the link at the top of this video description. Make sure you hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. to mess with a chick that always ordered that calamari we was cool back when we started later broke it off and then we both departed probably cause of her lifestyle since most of y'all just want to club and party these days i do it hardly listen to cajun but asians that drink bacardi hand me jack and i'm sitting good won't pause and i'm living good lower middle class nigga broke boy but now i'm grinding just how i should i see you now can't uh you the best out you should come around when you're not touring and such they gon' fuck with you when you high they won't around when you was warming up ain't that the truth but it's all this when I'm in a booth, got a couple screws loose, but I got the tools and I'm loose proof. And they got some fools, so we get the message. You ain't doing much, you got my shoes to wreck it. For the record, this is from a dude who really had fun when I was at the school with motherfucking session. Show a proof of lesson. Man, I gotta keep it raw. Could've ever filtered this. I gotta spit the realest shit. Realest shit. Yeah, I gotta keep it raw. Look, I never wore condoms and I had a thousand babies. No, I ain't that crazy. But listen here, baby. Here's that sushi.